Well, it's about 10 o'clock at night. I didn't realize it got so late, but this stupid deck is fighting me all the way. As some of you know, working on old decks is always sucky because all the fasteners that come out the bottom are usually all missing or all, you know, corroded and the heads of the bolts are disintegrated. But there's four main bolts that come down to hold the this carrier section here onto the deck and there's one bolt here right by my shoe one here and there's two in the back some of the old decks use carriage bolts these are just regular hex heads but on the bottom the hex heads are like totally disintegrated and i can't get this one bolt out so i'm probably going to end up grinding the head off the bottom taking the bolt out that way and then i've got to get new bolts to put in there to replace it I need to take those out in order to root the belt through there. So, spindle's good, blades are good, and uh, just got to get that stupid bolt out, and we should be in business. But here's what I what I saw. This blade was on the middle of the deck, and I don't know if you can see it, but it is bent like a pretzel. So I have three brand new Stens blades inside my cabinet there. I said, hmm, I wonder how they're looking. And I, I realized that, let's see if I can do this maybe like back to back. But, hmm, doesn't show up so much, but let's see. Look at how much that thing bends down here on the outside. See that gap? That old blade was so bent, it's out by over a quarter inch probably. And I was wondering why this deck always cut like crap, and these blades don't really have a lot of hours on them. I don't know if I hit something with it or, or what the case is there, but when I put these new blades back to back, they're not flat either. Each one of them has a bow in the middle. And I don't know if that's by design or if that's just they're warped or something like that. I don't know if they're not heat treated well and they quench them and they bend. But look at this. If you hold them back to back, they're, they're touching on the tips here. And look at how much they're bowed out in the middle here. So anyways, I put one new blade that was the straightest of the three new blades on that other deck and it seems to all line up now and the crappy spindle turns good but yeah i mean look at this i mean the two stens blades do line up with each other fine but look at this gap down here can you see how bent that blade is this is just out of control so that's going right in the scrap metal pile the deck carrier off of the deck now so i can route the belt properly and you never know what you're going to find on this stuff, and it just never ceases to amaze me that the dumb previous owner, or DPO as we call it, there's two bolts here that go up through the front that are roughly four inch long bolts that hold the uh, carrier set up here onto the deck. So I got all new bolts, because these things are all crappy and the heads are worn off and whatever. And I go to pound them down through the deck and some idiot put globs of welds on here <laughs> see that it's hard to see but there's globs of weld that someone put on here so the bolts can't fall through the deck and both of them have it so now I'm gonna have to take a grinder and just grind off those couple welds there before I can pound the bolts out which is kind of funny so that will be the next so step. I got the bolts out and I got the belt routed up where it's supposed to go and this is always a tough part but this is your adjustment over here on this idler pulley so basically i got to drop the deck carrier here and the pulley goes in the middle and then you got to get all four of those bolts hooked back up again which isn't really hard to do but it's just tough and they give you the diagram down here in case you don't know how it goes but i have this as loose as it can go and we'll We'll tighten this bolt to tighten the idler when we're done. And, uh, yeah, so, anyways, uh, that's the next step. Well, I'm just about done here. If you ever read the manual, it tells you to set a 
15 thousandths air gap in here in the spring and that's how you know when your deck is uh, belt is tight enough so I got my little feeler gauge in there and I was just eyeballing it but I can tell that it's really wide still and you can feel the you know the belt on the deck here and typical spring you look at this thing and it's like they're all different like that's about 15 that's a little big that one's a little big but I just like to look at the belt itself and feel the tension particularly in the back here where it has the longest stretch and uh, it's really not that hard to figure this out but and with a new belt like this after you mow for a little bit you should stop and check it to make sure it didn't stretch or something like that but yeah I think that I think we're pretty good I mean you look at the tension here on the back it moves maybe a half inch or so so I think we should be in good shape now and uh, hopefully it doesn't rub this freaking thing down here we'll see what happens anyways that's how you hook up a mower deck belt everything's spinning nice now the blades if I grab the uh, input shaft up here I can turn it and all my blades are moving okay there's really poor leverage doing that but look everything's working so I got to grease the new spindle that I put in and I'll just touch up the grease on the old ones make sure we're in good shape I finally stopped raining and I got everything back together here so uh, the blades spin freely I've got my new battery in here and uh, a couple other flaws the hood here is really really busted up here and one major problem is that the battery box is like bent it's been bent for a long time and it's hard to tell but it's bent down this way and I don't know if the welds are broken or if it's just bent but it vibrates like crazy and I don't know if that has anything to do with it but it really vibrates a lot but uh, yeah we got the deck hooked up and the deck is seen better days it's got a, some pretty bad holds in it here like you can see this here it's all crusty it's all crusty around the back but it's not blown through yet and I got vice grips on the Swift-O-Matic lever because it doesn't want to stay in gear. And down here, got a pretty big hole down there, but it plugs up with grass once you start mowing usually. <laughs> we'll see what happens this time. Yeah, so let's fire it up and see what happens.
here mowing and I just realized that the gas cap fell off somewhere. So now I gotta retrace my steps and look for the gas cap. Oh, that's not cool. It could be anywhere. It's probably destroyed. But the head gasket is apparently blown on that thing too. Forgot about that little detail. So anyways, it's working okay. Actually cut really nice. But I need to find my gas. Oh, sweet. What do you know? It's fine, too. There's not even anything wrong with it. I got lucky. That stupid rattling hood, man, just got the whole thing going crazy. But my grass sucks back here, by the way, too. But the deck is cutting really nice, so I'm happy with that. So, yeah, look at that hood shape. Crazy. Look at that stupid thing. Well, it worked awesome. Despite losing the gas cap and having a blown head gasket, it really performed flawlessly. So I just got to put the covers back on here, but the deck belt has loosened up quite a bit just from its initialness here. You can see the gap in my spring has really opened up a lot. So I also got grease flying out of these freaking pulleys. This is not the pulley that I rebuilt. I rebuilt the one on the other side, but you know, I've greased, put too much grease in there. And the minute I turned on the mower, grease started shooting out. So I'm sure it got on the belt somewhere, but it's, Never slipped, never missed a beat. So, anyways, uh, I'll tighten this up a little bit before I use it next week. But, yeah, very happy with this machine. Really worked amazing. So, we'll mark this one down as being fixed.